Okie dokie. I think I am live. Alright. Wonderful. Hello everybody. My name is Aspen. I am a sexologist. And I wanted to do this live stream just to interact with everybody and chat about things that have been on my mind lately. So forgive me because the technology part is not my strong suit. So that is something that is not, uh, that I'm not as used to. So anyways, I'm just here trying to figure out if I can go to a place where I can see the, the screen without so many things around it. <laughs> um, so bear with me for just one second. Welcome. Please comment if I know you or if I don't know you. You can introduce yourself or say hello because that helps me see you know, who's watching and who's not watching. Um, let's see. Let's see here. <clears throat> Laura <laughs> thank you so much I'm so happy you get to watch oh I wonder what time it is where you are awesome all right so first of all today is the spring equinox which I'm really excited about Finally, we're going to get into the warmer weather, kind of the season of new life, new energy. It's a new moon today, so all of that is great. And yeah, so with that new energy, I've been feeling a lot of motivation. Oh, it's 6, 12 p.m.? Okay, well, that's actually not that different. But I think the difference is it's a whole other day in advance where you are. <laughs> so that is a huge difference. But it's only 7, 12 p.m. here, but like a day earlier, I think. Anyways, I'm so happy you're watching. So thank you. And yeah, so pretty much just with that new fresh energy, I've been thinking a lot about what all this means to me, what somatica coaching means to me, um, what the word coach means to other people, and just my own personal fun sex explorations, which is really my favorite thing anyways to talk about. So that's always the most exciting. And lately I have been having some really awesome sex and um, some of that is just due to an ebb and flow. I think what I would like to say first off is that I am very committed to my sex life and my sexuality. It's something that I really want in my life and even when it's tricky or hard, I always continue to learn more, keep trying, trying new things, um, and just that's something I'm passionate about. It's not necessarily going to be the thing that everyone is passionate about, and that's fine. Um, but I will say that I feel like the fact that I am really passionate about it and really committed to the process, it helps me have better sex in the long run because I'm doing it more often, I'm finding time to do it. I think that's probably the biggest tricky thing out of anything for you know people, especially people with kids or jobs or any kind of life, is finding the time for intimacy. Um, because it doesn't always just happen spontaneously like how we see in the movies or you know, just this this kind of way that sex is portrayed where it should always be this spontaneous, exciting moment that's never planned out. Um, that just isn't the case for me. Uh, I do have to plan and kind of make sure that there's time because if I don't, there will literally be no time. And then I can go, it can go a long time without ever having intimacy. And that's just not something I'm willing to accept. So I do set aside time for sex. Um, 
Yeah. It's been really good the last couple weeks. Um, me and my boyfriend, Eric, went through a lull. We kind of go through these like peaks and then valleys. And I think that's really normal. One thing I will say for myself is I get really stressed out when we're not having as much sex. And for me, I think that has to do with like a, a it's like a trigger of feeling rejected or not feeling as confident in myself when that's happening. And it's kind of tricky because for my partner, it has nothing to do with me. It just has to do with maybe a moment that he's in where he's focused on other things or just not having a strong desire for sex every day or even that regularly. And that's normal. That happens. You know, it's not, it doesn't really have anything to do with me. It's not personal, but I have a tendency to take it personally. So that's been something I've been working on and just kind of feeling into how that feels when it's happening. Like, oh, you're feeling rejected or unwanted or sad or just even like a throwing a little temper tantrum because you want sex and kind of just observing that instead of um, being really hard on myself about it and saying, you're not supposed to feel this way. Stop feeling this way. Or on the other hand, just going way into it and just saying, yes, I'm not wanted and I'm this and I, uh, he doesn't want me and everything's a mess, you know, just kind of this neutral zone where I'm, I'm feeling the feeling and kind of noticing it and being accepting of it without trying to make it go away or just like wallowing in it because I have a tendency towards both of those things. So that is all thanks to my somatica training for sure. Um, so thanks to that. And uh, yeah, so that was happening a couple weeks ago. We were kind of in a lull where, oh, I'm not gonna have, we don't care to have any of our laundry in the back. Let's just move the laundry out of the background. All right, eh, whatever, doesn't matter. Anyways, um, like I said, guys, the technology part is not my strong suit. Sex, great. Being with people, great. Talking to people, awesome. Hugging, cuddling, being connected and vulnerable and myself and authentic, fine. Technology, no, not good. Not good for me. Anyways, so like I was saying to my friend Laura, if anybody new comes in and wants to say hi, it's so-and-so, introduce yourself or just say, State your business. State state yourself. You can. Um, so I was just saying how when there's a lull, I can get really worked up about it. But thanks to Somatica and learning how to feel into my feelings more, I don't get as worked up. Um, I'm able to kind of sit with the feelings, let them pass. Sometimes they don't pass very quickly, but I'm more accepting of myself of that. And um, yeah, not take things so personally, which is so great because when I take things personally, I'm the one that's, I'm hurting myself by taking things personally, more personally than they need to be. So there's that. Um, so we went through this lull. I got really emotional. Oh, that's a really good question, Laura. Yeah, so sometimes I, of course, I seek self-pleasure, but for me, it's not as fulfilling. Um, I don't know really why that is. I guess maybe it's just this time in my life. Um, when I am horny and I want to masturbate, I like to watch porn. That helps me out. And I mostly like to use my fingers. I have toys, but I don't use them as often. Um, I just like to kind of use my own fingers and, you know, pleasure myself that way. And I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of time. <gasps> Hi, Vero. So good to see you. I'm so happy you got to come in. Um, so I don't have a lot of time in my house by myself. 
like hard never like there's either my son or my partner our home and then if my son's gone and just my partner's home like I want to have sex but when I have the house to myself yeah I love to kind of get get in touch with myself you know masturbate give myself that pleasure it's awesome um it's not for me as much of like a I know for some people it's like a very sensual, like spiritual connecting with the self process. For me, it's more about like just the pleasure part uh, when I masturbate. So there's that. And I just, I'm here to say any way that you like to masturbate or have sex or be with partners or be with yourself, um, that's great. Do that. Like whatever feels good to you. You don't need to be doing it in this cosmic, like, um, tutti fruity spiritual, uh, way, like, you know, t for it to be good. I feel like a lot of viewpoints are out there in society about how people should be having sex, how people should be masturbating, how, how people should be doing everything. And I just like to help people find, like, what actually feels good to you what makes you feel good and what is the thing that gets you excited and then help people weed through all of that other stuff because there's so much stuff there may be stuff that's super shaming and then on the other hand there could be like spiritual leaders that are like oh it needs to be this way and it needs to be this open-minded and it needs to be you need to be having a lot of sex and your own unique desires and way of doing things is is it that's it you know so <laughs> I like to help people with that and um, yeah so uh, yeah that's why I figured I'd mention that because you know I'm not gonna sit around and say oh I give myself self-pleasure and I you know connect with myself and I'm so tender with myself it's like no I'm just like you know using my fingers and watching porn and yeah it's good <laughs> and that's it um, I have done that though. I've done like an exercise where I kind of take my time and I like touch my whole body kind of leading up to getting to my pussy. And that was a cool exercise just to feel the difference of how it feels. Yeah, quick and dirty. That's right. <laughs> Actually, I do edge still. So when I am masturbating, even though it's like all about getting off, I will like prolong it for a long time. I like that build up. So <laughs> long and dirty. That's how I like it. But um, yeah, so when I did do the exercise where I touched myself all over my body before I ever touched my pussy, I noticed that there was enhanced sensitivity. So that's definitely a fun trick. And I could go into that, I could go into that a lot more. Um, that's actually a practice that I've done with my partner, basically incorporating some tools that I've learned along the way to, it basically helps us get more present and it creates anticipation. So anticipation is a huge one for me. Um, and this kind of is a good segue into core desires, but we'll, we'll just stick with this. Um, anticipation feels awesome for me. I really like the buildup and I need a lot of foreplay as well. So it goes hand in hand. Um, so I've done the exercise touching for my own pleasure with my partner. And that exercise is really focused on getting out of the head and kind of disinhibiting, basically breaking free from sexual anxiety that you know we put on ourselves to please the partner. Um, it's really common to get really stressed out about if the partner is enjoying themselves, right? Like, how do I touch him? How do I make him feel good? Or vice versa. You know, a lot of the time people socialized as men get really stressed out about pleasing women um, and, and can get really stuck in the head, just worried about if they're doing it right, if they're touching right, if they're doing this, you know, because the vulva is very complex 
and you know there's a lot to it so I think it can be a little overwhelming but um and just so you know if any guys watch this please chime in I'd love to answer any questions about the vulva for you um so this exercise touching for your own pleasure was really helpful when we did it together because it got us out of our heads into our bodies through breathing obviously calming the nervous system settling in and then also we get to do some fun touching which is really fun to do with a partner I also do that with clients um, it's within the boundaries of somatica touching is something that's encouraged in many of the exercises um, we have our clothes on and it's not touching that's leading specifically to orgasm but the exercises include touch and this helps people learn because how are we supposed to learn intimacy by just sitting across from each other and talking and um, that doesn't really work that way at least for me I feel like this is the way I'd like to learn and teach intimacy so yeah touching for your own pleasure we sat down we did our breath work and then we each took turns and I've done this with um, a friend of mine a girlfriend and my partner and I've done it with clients as well and each of us takes turns touching the other one how it feels best for us so for example if it was my turn to be doing the touching my focus would be on my own pleasure I would not be touching with the intention of making you feel good I would be focused on how do I want to touch you that feels good to me so I would you know get into my body get into my own desire start feeling what's sexy about you what do I want to grab do I want to grab your muscle do I want to grab you know your thigh do I want to just gently caress your arms what feels good for me so I get to do that and it's it's interesting to see how challenging it is actually to get out of my head and figure out what I actually want to be doing um, and you know what the cool thing about this is is that when I am touching for my own pleasure and I am in my desire that is the biggest turn on to my partner and same for me of course one of my core desires is being like ravished so if my partner is touching me and grabbing my ass and you know grabbing all over my body for his pleasure and doing it the way that feels good for him I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel his wanting for me at its peak and if we're both focused on our own pleasure we're both gonna be just building that anticipation and bringing our desires into the experience so that one's huge for me that I love and I was reminded of it when we were talking about you know ante anticipation so yeah that's a good one for building anticipation and um, another good one for building anticipation and also just a self-pleasure exercise is what I was just talking about where um, one second to breathe for a second I was talking too much there's my stripper pole <laughs> yeah so um I got really excited that's a really good question yeah so Laura just asked what if you don't feel attuned to your partner when they're touching you and thank you that's a good question and for other viewers attuned basically means connected and on the same page so 
if you don't feel attuned to, you might feel like your partner isn't really connecting with you or isn't really touching you in a way that feels right for you. And I think in that case, you know, obviously with touching for your own pleasure, it's just one exercise. It is not the like solving to everything. So if you're not feeling connected to or enjoying the touch, it's important to communicate that. And there are ways to communicate what you would like and how it could feel better for you to be touched in a way that still keeps you connected and sexy and like, you know, doesn't break, break it apart. I think I know a fear for me sometimes for communicating my needs is that if I say it, it's going to ruin the mood. It's going to, you know, make it not fun or something. But it's not true. It can actually be really sexy when you ask for what you want. So for instance, if my partner's touching me for his pleasure and he's getting really turned on, but I'm not getting turned on, and it's not really doing it for me, um, I would definitely suggest offering some suggestions. Like, uh, for me, I like to say what I do like the best first. So if there's a way that your partner's touching you that you do like, and then there's other ways that they're touching you that you don't like, um, I would always recommend saying the ways you do like first. So for instance, oh, I love it how you're touching me so gently on my arm. And then maybe that might be enough where then they kind of attune and they can still keep touching you the way that they like, but with the focus on the style that you like it in. And, um, you know, if that doesn't work, you can always just say, hey, I really love that we're having this sexy time together, but I'm going to need a break from the touching for a second, and I want to touch you, but I want to touch you now. Maybe take a turn where you're doing more of the pursuing. Um, that can kind of switch up the order of things and just create some flow. Uh, I know for some people, too much touching, especially repeated touching in the same spot, can be aggravating. Um, and there's so many different ways of touching. And so if you were teaching your partner techniques on how to be touched, um, you could talk to them about feather touch, where it's a much lighter touch, almost like a tickle. And that can be really sensual and create a lot of nerve endings. It can, it can stimulate your nerves and really make your skin feel alert. And then some people like a more of a squeezing or a holding touch, maybe like a grabbing, kind of pulling in. So there's that kind of touch. And I encourage everyone to explore this with your partner or with yourself, because we may never have even thought about how we like to be touched. So much of this isn't even talked about. Like, oh, I get to decide how I'd like to be touched. Oh, what a concept. Yes, you can decide how you'd like to be touched. You can explore how your body responds to different kinds of touch. So even right now, while you're sitting there watching this, if you want to, you can kind of feel what feels nice. The light feather touch. or maybe more of a squeezing, holding. You can try it on, I like it a lot on my thighs. So squeezing. And then a lot of people like a combination, especially if you're with a partner. You know, the kind of grabbing, pulling closer and then pushing away, kind of feather touch somewhere and then squeezing, um, the combination can be really nice. And then some people like pain. Um, they're slapping, biting, um, you know, grabbing the neck. These are all things you can experiment with, with yourself or with the partner, just to see, you know, what feels good. There could be something that you discover you didn't even know was a big turn on to you. And those are just the physical, like, sensations of the body. I mean, that is just the basic surface part 
um, and it's not basic at all. I just mean it's the surface and it goes so much deeper. I mean, the desires and things that can turn us on, it's, it's like a whole untapped land. It's incredible. I get so excited about it. Um, that's what I love helping people with the most in my sessions is helping find the things that get us the most turned on. The inside things. Um, meaning that there's outside sensations and then there's of course techniques for pleasure. You know, our pussies and our vulvas have so much untapped potential pleasure. Uh, our clits, you know, the cervix, the G-spot, there's so much there. Our, our anus, our asshole is an amazing pleasure center. <laughs> um, so there's so many different ways to explore that. And of course the penis is, uh, you know, a little bit easier to navigate, but there's a lot you can do with the penis that you might not even know that is possible. You know, there's a lot of ways to turn on a penis other than just the, you know, mainstream ways that everybody knows. Um, so yeah, those, those are the things that are kind of like the body, the actual nervous system, the pleasure center, um, tips, techniques, ways to find how your body likes to be touched, um, different kinds of foreplay. If anyone has any questions about that stuff, I love talking about it. <laughs> it's a blast for me. Um, always but my favorite thing to talk about is the things that get us fired up from the inside like the inner workings of our mind and our emotions because our emotional and mental selves are very connected to our sexuality and many of our biggest turn-ons are actually formed through our life experiences sometimes even through from childhood or from traumatic experiences Oh, Barrow. There don't don't worry. It's not it's not like basic at all. Who teaches us this stuff? Like some lady with a banana at high school? If we're lucky in New Mexico. I mean, seriously. It's not basic. Ask away. Ask me a question about the penis. I wanna hear. <laughs> I seriously wish that sex education was more focused on pleasure. <laughs> like I, I don't I don't understand sex education. It's not um, educational. It really isn't. Uh, it's like fear and shame based only. They're it's pretty much like, don't do it. But if you do, use a condom. <laughs> and that's it. Like they don't tell you anything. Um, all right. Well, let's see. So what could I say about pleasuring a penis? Let's see. All right, so what I'll say about penises is that it really, it depends on the penis, right? Some of them are circumcised and some of them are not circumcised. Um, so when a penis is circumcised, it's gonna be more exposed, but the area that's exposed has been exposed its whole life. So it's going to be a little bit desensitized in some ways. And you can be a little bit rougher with it. <laughs> Technically, I mean, you can, you know, you just, you could be a little bit um, more free flowing with it because it, because of this. Um, oh, I moved the damn thing. See, I told you with this technology, it's so confusing. Yes, Laura, such a good point. Male pleasure is is discussed, but female pleasure is not discussed. Oh, you don't even know how fired up that gets me. This whole thing started by me discovering that some of my friends had never had an orgasm and just being like so, just like angry at the world, you know, just like frustrated that that's a thing and figuring out how I can help people have more pleasure. Um, yeah, so, so that really is what motivated me, um, to start all of this is actually helping my 
women bodied, female bodied friends, you know, people with pussies figure out how to have orgasms. Um, and then of course it's just evolved into so much more than that. But, um, where did your last message go? Okay. Well, I remember what you said other than the tip, where's the penis sensitive? So the whole shaft is sensitive. The balls are actually quite sensitive and also the area right under the balls, between the balls and the ass, is a really nice place to touch. I also like to massage the mound around the penis. This goes for both men and women. The mound and the outside area of the genitals is really sensitive and it helps blood flow. So, um, as I was saying with one of the exercises, it's nice to incorporate other touch all around the body. We live in a really, uh, penis centric society. So, you know, that goes along with the patriarchy and what Laura was saying about male pleasure being taught and female pleasure not being taught. But along with that, men kind of also get the brunt of it in some ways. When it comes to sex, they're expected to have hard penises the whole time. Um, it's very much have a hard penis or there's something wrong with you. That's a lot of pressure. That's a really stressful way to have sex. Um, and a lot of the time when men are having sex and fooling around, the partner will go straight to stroking the penis, touching the penis, sucking the penis, um, which is awesome and great. I don't think a lot of men are complaining, but that's because they might not have experienced this full body pleasure mapping. So full body pleasure mapping is an exercise you can do on your own, I would highly suggest it. If you're a man, woman, you know, non-binary, anybody with a body can do this exercise. Um, so pretty much just relax, get into a calm place, do some breathing, and then just once you get settled in and you're just laying there and you're in a comfortable place, you can start touching yourself all over the body you can experiment with the different touches we talked about, the feather touch, the squeezing, or just kind of thoughtless touch, just, just kind of mindless, just exploring all over the body. And as you're doing this, in a curious way without judgment, just think to yourself, huh, oh, does this feel good? Does this feel nice? Do I like this? Oh, this part of my body is very sensitive. Notice the areas of sensitivity. And you can just touch every surface of your body and figure out different areas that are sensitive other than, you know, the vulva or the penis. And by doing this, you're waking your body up and getting it used to other forms of, of stimulation other than just the genitals. Especially for men, experimenting with this could be really nice because you're not going straight to your penis. Um, you're, you're experimenting with other areas. My boyfriend actually discovered when we did the exercise, he liked to be touched behind the neck and kind of on the hair. And it was an interesting experience because he felt almost a little twinge of shame about that because it's a little bit of a, you know, society has made it out to be sort of this feminine way of being touched, you know, like where somebody might grab a girl from the back of the neck and pull her close. Um, but why would it be feminine? It, it, it could feel good for anyone. I don't know. Um, like I said, society comes up, up with a lot of things. Uh, and then we are brainwashed and, you know, socialized through all these very subtle avenues to believe these things. Like no one ever told us. Oh, being grabbed by the back of the neck and pulled closer is for women. No one ever told me that, but in the back of our minds, we've only seen that done to women. And so we were talking about that and it was cool to discover that he enjoyed that and it felt really good. Um, so all that being said, women, when it comes to stimulation and excitement, they work from the outside in. 
So people with vulvas get really turned on by outside touch all over the body and then working all the way down and working slowly inwards, touching the mound, touching the labia minora, labia majora, all the way in and then touching the clit last. I'm so excited for you. It is such a fun adventure and like I said there's like there's so many exciting things you can discover with yourself and then with other people. I'm just I'm thrilled for you. Um yeah so this is an awesome thing for you to try just the touching all over working your way in not touching the clit until you've touched everywhere else in your body and seeing how that feels. Now people with penises they work from the penis out so the penis gets stimulated and then the rest of the body becomes aroused. Now that's not to say that we shouldn't touch the rest of the body. It's just a different, like it's a different cycle that the body does. So when I'm touching a penis or I'm like jerking it off or giving a blow job, I like to be caressing the whole penis, the shaft, the tip, touching the tip gently. Um, and I like to rub around the legs, rub the mound, rub the balls, gently squeeze the balls, lick the balls. Also, as you're licking up the shaft of the penis, on the back side of the penis is a little taut line that connects the head to the shaft, and that's called the frenulum. Frenulum, yes. And I like to lick that as well. Um, and for people with penises that are uncircumcised, the foreskin can actually be used as something to give pleasure. So you can use the foreskin to jerk off the penis because it's a nice, soft, you know, the soft skin on the inside it feels good for the penis head. You can use that. You can, you know, be creative with it. The tip is sometimes more sensitive when it comes to penises that still have the foreskin intact. So just keep that in mind. You also would not want to pull the foreskin down forcefully. You want to be gentle with it. Uh, like I said, with, with circumcised penises, you can be a little, you can rough them up a little bit more. Um, and yeah, so my biggest tip for penises is just don't be afraid to touch all around the area and play with the balls and the entire shaft is going to be sensitive, but the tip is the most sensitive. The tip is like the clit. Actually, it's very similar if you look at the anatomy structure of a vulva and a penis. So yeah, that also. I, like I said, I'll say it again, I am huge on anticipation. So the other day when me and my boyfriend were about to have sex, and actually, funny story, we had had a really shitty day. <laughs> we, it was one of those days where I was very pouty about not having sex, actually. Um, like we were talking about earlier. I was very pouty, was not um, enjoying the fact that we hadn't had sex yet that day when my son was not home. We were fighting, I was kind of in my feels. And then by the time it was the end of the night and we had talked through things, you know, we had a chance and it was like, all right, let's give it a try. Um, I wanted to have sex even though I was being pouty. And he was, he's great. He was like, let's do it. Like, I wanna have sex, I, I wanna try it. I know it might not go that well, but let's give it a go. And I was thinking that it was gonna not be good because I was emotional and I wasn't feeling confident. I was feeling, you know, unwanted and stuff. So I didn't know how the sex would be. When we started, because I knew I really wanted the sex and I didn't want my emotions to get in the way of the thing I've been wanting all day that I'm pouty about not having, I decided to turn my emotions into like a powerful dance. So, what I mean by that is that I 
took my emotions and instead of feeling unwanted and unsexy, I decided that I was like a sex magician and I was powerful and I was going to take back the power and make him like go crazy for it. And basically how I did that was just honing in on this energy of feeling this power, like this sex power. And then um, while I was jerking him off and he was fingering me, which is one of the ways that we do foreplay, I was barely touching it. So I was touching the balls, I was caressing the balls, and I wish I, I should have brought a dildo in here or something. Next time I'll bring a dildo. It'll be great. <laughs> Everyone comment if they want to see me to jerk off a dildo. <laughs> um, so I was, I was touching his balls and I was caressing them and then I would, every once in a while I would very lightly touch his penis. Um, and I would just slide my hand against it and then I'd go back to the balls and I would just barely touch the penis and I would touch the shaft a little and I would touch the head and he was getting so turned on because I wasn't really touching the penis at all. So that's a really good trick is just teasing, teasing the whole area, slowly building to actually touching it. I never even spit on it, which normally, you know, you'd want to have um, lube or spit or something to like jerk off a penis. Um, but this time I didn't because I wasn't really like touching the whole shaft and the whole penis very much. So I kept it dry and I would just slowly like rub my hand against it very delicately. And I did a lot of teasing and we had really hot sex. Um, and by the time he actually put it inside, it was like that he hadn't really gotten much until he actually, you know, slid it in. So that was super hot for me. I love teasing and anticipation. And it was also really hot for him. Oh, I will totally do that. I'm going to start doing these um, pretty regularly, especially since I have even a couple people who are... Uh, feeling like it's useful and engaging. So thank you so much for that um, And I will I'll bring the dildo next time. I also want to get like a vulva Thing, but I don't have that yet. So You know, what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, so I'll do that next time Let's see. Uh, does anybody have any other questions right now? while I kind of collect myself and get ready for the next stuff I want to talk about. I'm also going to write down these ideas. Look, I drew a butt. Also, I have a crystal that's a naked chick's body. It's so pretty. That's all good. Thank you so much for being here and being so supportive. I really, really appreciate it. And yes, have a great rest of your night. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. That's that butt. I'll show you my butt now. Here's my butt. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Also, Laura, it's so awesome. I can't wait to see you on Friday in the training. Dildo. That is what I am writing down. <laughs> And vulva, vulva display, I guess. Yes, I'm so excited for this training. It's our last module, everybody. So me and Laura are students together in the Somatica training from the Somatica Institute. 
The Lubel. Don't forget the Lubel. Lubel. I'm writing it now. <laughs> Vulva Puppet. Oh, that's a, that's perfect. Vulva Puppet. Thank you, dear. Yes, 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 yes. I can't wait. <sighs> I wonder. Never mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm fidgeting around in this chair so much. I'm telling you, the technology thing is so weird. I feel so, so awkward. I'm trying to get my boobs in here. A little more. There we go. I'm burning a little sage because I need to chill. Happy solstice. I mean equinox. You know what I mean. New fresh energy. All the new fresh energy. This week has been nothing but fresh energy. I took an extra day off of work at the restaurant so that I can focus more on this business. I have been preparing to go on a trip to Mexico, which I'm so excited for. And me and my boyfriend have been having so much hot sex. Oh. I have a huge announcement to make. If someone new has tuned in, please say hello. It makes me feel so loved. Um, so, announcement. The other night, I gave my boyfriend a blowjob from start to finish. That's all it was. It was a blowjob and I finished it. So, the reason that's exciting is because uh, my boyfriend is not a quick or easy comer. So it's very challenging to give him an orgasm through a blowjob. I've done it before, but usually it's, you know, take it longer or, you know, we've had sex first and then done the blowjob or even had porn on in the background, which is great. There's nothing wrong with those things. But this time it was just so hot. I just started giving him a blowjob and then it was so good and he said, you know, keep going, I might be able to come. And I was like, yes, let's do it. And I kept going and I used the momentum of like pushing my arms into the bed to kind of give me like a bouncing effect um, to keep it going. And the other thing I did that I always have done is in between because, you know, it gets tiring and it's hard to continue, you know, just doing the blowjob the whole time from start to finish. So in between, I jerk the penis off and then I go back to the blowjob. And I did that and then, ta-da! Yeah, start to finish blowjob. I felt super excited about it. For me, that's, that's so thrilling, I love it. Uh, of course it was thrilling for him too, but thought I'd share that with you all. Um, and that's just one of the many, we've had a lot of really great sex this last week. Um, what are some of the other best experiences? Let's see. Mm, Friday night. Last Friday was a really great date night. We had sex. I had a great orgasm. And then, like an hour later, we had sex again. And that was awesome. I love that. There was a night recently where we had sex three nights, three times in a night. Love that. Um, yeah. Just overall, overall goodness with our sex life this week. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's up and down and I accept that. In the moment, sometimes I don't, but I do accept it. So that's been awesome. And yeah, I guess I will talk briefly before we end about how sessions are with me. Like I said, I was going to. Um, so, I am trained through the Somatica Institute. I'm going to be certified very soon. This is my last module this weekend. 
um, and then I'll be complete. I'll have completed my training, and the training is to become a certified sex and relationship and intimacy coach. I also will be a certified sexologist, um, which is really cool. I love the title sexologist. Um, I also have a degree from school in sociology, and I've learned a lot about gender and, you know, the sociology of gender and how we are socialized as a society. So that was one of the first things that got me motivated to do this work, aside from helping my friends have better orgasms. Um, so yeah, I'm almost certified, basically. The word coach, I don't know if people have a great feeling about it. I don't really think it matters what I call it. I, uh, I have been trained with some amazing tools and education about something that I'm already passionate about. And now I can help other people with it. I can help guide people towards better intimacy or just more intimacy in general. Um, and that encompasses so much that it is kind of hard to explain, I feel like. Um, when, when I think about intimacy, I think about having great out of this world sex, having lots of wonderful sex with whoever I wanna have sex with, if that's one person for the rest of my life, or if it's many people, great. It's really up to me and, um, and the others that I'm engaging with. And uh, you know, it comes down to honest communication and boundaries. So that's what I want, you know, I want that great sex. And I also crave intimacy in a connected way. So I also want to feel loved, safe, um, have healthy um, attachment styles, you know, just feel comfortable with people. Again, this does not mean it has to be in a monogamous relationship. You can have very, very healthy attachments with multiple people. It just comes down to doing the healing of old wounds. There's so many old wounds from our attachment to our parents. Um, most people have not had a perfect upbringing where you just feel wonderfully loved and attached to your parents. That's not usually the case. There's usually um, a mixture of things which creates you know, struggles as an adult. So I'm trained in exercises to help people build healthy attachments, heal inner child uh, trauma, you know, our little inner selves that got hurt when we were little. There's ways to kind of go back and heal those old wounds. There's um, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Uh, so much of intimacy and healthy, happy, wonderful sex is boundaries. Knowing what yours are, finding out what they are, learning how to know what they are first off, and then tell another person what they are. Huge. Um, tons of techniques on that, and also just really like working with people to figure out their boundaries and practicing, talking about it. Um, and then there's, there's just so much else, and there's all the fun, sexy things. Uh, finding out how you like to be touched, uh, finding out you know, what feels good, what, what kind of uh, scenario you like, um, and then the core desires, which is literally the biggest thing for me. Um, and I help people with all of these things by talking, but also attuning with the body, finding connection, really listening, um, empathizing, which is... <laughs> much more than just saying, yeah, I know how you feel. It's, I truly am trying to hear what you're saying and feel into that. Um, and then there's a variety of experimental exercises. And the cool thing about somatic work is that it's all about the body. Oh, I'm not going to, girl. I'll see you soon, okay? Mm, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, it's all about the body, learning embodiment, breathing deeply, learning how to actually get into the body and out of the head, 
they can work together, but if I'm only in the head, I'm not going to be able to heal through some of the past traumas I've had, the shame. Um, it's just going to be in a loop in my head. And so I can help people get from that loop in the head into the feelings. And that really helps a lot um, with processing. So I, I help with that. Um, I'm also just a really, I'm the person that you can tell all of the weirdest stuff to. Like, whatever stuff you think is too weird, please bring it to me. My happiest, most joyful self just wants to de-shameify the world and help everyone work through society's shame that tells us that things are wrong or this is wrong and that's wrong. I mean, we are shamed. I c it would take a whole nother hour to talk about all the ways we're shamed by society. And I just want to help everyone break free of that because there's nothing that blocks off arousal more than shame. And so that's what I really want to do. I want to shout it from the rooftop. I want to shout, I like sex. I don't care <laughs> about your shame. I want to shout it from the rooftop. I want to literally take a magic wand and bless everyone with orgasms. You get an orgasm. You get an orgasm. Everyone gets orgasms. And I want to help everybody embrace their their fantasies and their kinks, fetishes, all the stuff that you might think is the weirdest. That's the stuff I want to hear about. And I, my job and just what, what I do naturally is going to be to celebrate that with you. And that's what makes me so happy is that I'm going to celebrate with you and I'm going to find ways, even if something seems very taboo, I'm going to find ways and help you just, you know, explore ways to get your needs met in a, in a positive way that doesn't harm anyone, doesn't harm yourself, you know, and, and is a consenting, fun, safe way to get these needs met. There are so many creative ways to take your fantasies and your desires and work them into your sex life with yourself or your partner. There are uh, just um, unlimited amounts of ways that you can do that. And so that's what I really like to help people with. All the healing, the nurturing, the love, building that healthy attachment uh, with clients and helping clients build attachment that feels secure with me and with others. And then also all the exploring of the fun sexuality because there's just not a lot of places in this world where we get to do that. So I really love to do that. Um, so that's some of the stuff I'm most passionate about. And in the session, we're going to sit down together. We're going to talk like a normal therapy session. Um, you're going to notice me pacing myself, really connecting with you, empathizing with you. Um, and we're going to talk about your goals. And I'm probably going to suggest a, an experimental exercise. Hello. Welcome. Um, I'm going to suggest an experimental, experimental exercise that applies to something that you are wanting to work on in your life. So for ex example, if you're feeling like, you know, you're having difficulties connecting to others um, sexually or just intimately. We might do an exercise that's based around attachment, you know, just being present with each other, connecting, and then possibly bringing desire into it where I might send you some erotic energy and flirt with you a bit with my eyes and then you can take a turn sending that energy back to me and we can sit with it and see how it feels. Um, in my sessions, we're going to be doing a lot of, you know, attuning, empathizing, you know, sharing with each other vulnerably. And then there's also going to be exercises and erotic energy exchanged. This is different than other modalities. And that's because it's a totally different way of being trained. And the reason why it's so amazing for me is that not only do I get to be there for you and be a supportive, loving person in your life, 
I also get to be the person that you learn intimacy with. So you may be already great. Maybe your intimacy is awesome. Maybe your sex is awesome. You know, maybe you're just curious about learning new things. Well, then that's fun. It's like we get to play with each other. Like we are getting to be in a science lab and we're trying experiments. Like, oh, does this make me feel sexier? Does this make me feel empowered? Does this help me feel more in touch with my feelings? Oh, does this make me feel dominant? Oh, maybe this makes me feel submissive. So we're experimenting with things. And in the relationship lab, we get a practice on each other. So I get to practice sharing intimacy and erotic energy with you. You get to practice that with me. And I get to feel how it feels to, you know, date you or share in that energy with you. Um, all of my sessions, they're always fully clothed. There's no nudity in the sessions. Um, there's no touching that leads to orgasm. There's no kissing, no making out. But there is sensual touch, flirtation. It is encouraged to have a crush on each other because what a better way to learn intimacy than to have a crush on each other and to see how that feels and how to navigate it. That's, you know, it's, it's a great way so you can take it out into the world. Um, obviously, everything is consensual. Um, if you come in and you don't want any of that energy, that's fine. I will have my own connection to my own sexuality, but I don't have to bring that to you at all. Um, it's all within, you know, both of our paces. And it's just an exploration. Um, a few things that I'm helping clients with right now. One client I am helping work through shame around the kind of porn that he watches. He watches porn of people who remind him of women who have rejected him. So there's certain porn stars that remind him of exes who rejected him and he repeatedly watches them and it is his quickest path to arousal. He feels extremely ashamed of that and like it is damaging um, to interact in that way. Um, so what I'm helping him learn and try to work with is just having a different relationship with it. I'm not promising that he's going to change that behavior. I am not telling him he should change it. I'm also not telling him he, he if he wants to change the behavior, he can. It's his choice. I do not give advice. I don't tell people what to do. It's just not in my professional realm. I want to help people do what they want to do and I can help you get there because I'm trained to be in tune with subtleties in the way you talk about something. And I'm trained to ask the questions that will help us both be guided to the answers that will support you most. So I don't give advice. I'm not telling my client that he should you know, stop watching that or that he should continue. I just offered him the idea of having a different relationship with it. And I talked to him about core desires and how some of the things that turn us on the most actually come from traumatic events. For instance, he said, being rejected is a traumatic experience. Why do I want to watch people who remind me of these, these women who were bad to me? And I said, well, because sometimes our traumatic experiences help form our paths to arousal. There's studies on it, there's books, there's um, a lot of resources about how that works. So, you know, what do you do about that? Um, basically, all I can say is help him work through the shame around it, right? Because feeling ashamed of the behavior is actually the only thing that's keeping him unhappy. Watching them is great. He's really turned on by it. It's very hot for him to watch this porn. The thing that's making him unhappy is actually his his thought process about why that's bad, basically. And we all have those, right? This turns me on, but that's bad. I shouldn't be turned on by that. That shouldn't is just a ball of shame. 
So I'm helping him work through the shame around it. And I just offered him the option of just having a, maybe a different relationship with it. Not going to say what it should be, but maybe just a different relationship um, with that, that porn that he watches. Maybe just being open-minded to the fact that what is wrong with watching that? What is wrong with watching porn that really turns you on, even if it is about someone who rejected you? Um, that could be one of his core desires, you know? Maybe one of his core desires is women who are very hard to get, women who are kind of mean to him or dismissive. That could be a core desire of his. And so we're exploring that right now. And um, yeah, core desires is one of my favorite things to talk about. Core desires are the ways that you want to feel during sex. So we talked a lot about, you know, the outside, the pleasure center, penises, vulvas, stuff like that. But on the inside and the emotions and the mental level, core desires are the way we want to feel. And a lot of the times those are formed by life experiences or even traumas as we grow up. And it's just, it's incredible once you get to tap into those. There are lots of different ways to explore what the core desires are. And I'm telling you, once you learn yours, it's just, it opens up a whole nother world. I know that the word may be unfamiliar, but think of it like this. You know, when you're having sex or if you're watching porn or if you're masturbating, what are the things about the experience and what are the feelings that you, you have that make you come? What about it makes you come? What about the experience is it? And dissecting that and kind of getting in there and figuring it out. Um, there's multiple different things. Most people have several core desires. Um, and, you know, some of them could be feeling, feeling so powerful. Or feeling like you're a god. Or you could your core desire could be feeling used or maybe your core desire is feeling irresistible when you're with a partner and they are looking at you like they cannot keep their hands off of you that's maybe feeling irresistible that's one of mine I also really like feeling used and owned so certain phrases can really help you learn your core desires. If there's certain things that you just want to hear during sex, that can help you learn about your core desires. Like for me, since I like to feel owned, I like to hear like, this pussy's mine, you know? And let me tell you something about core desires. They do not have to line up with your ethics or how you normally are in your day-to-day -day life. I, I can tell you that because I am a feminist and <laughs> I uh, fight against oppression and sex, sexism and all this stuff on a regular basis, yet during sex I like to feel owned and used. Hmm. Well, I, that's fine. I don't, I don't need to worry about that because my core desires are mine and I'm allowed to be turned on by whatever the hell I want <laughs> and be a feminist. It's the same. So, um... Yeah, there's a lot of ways to explore. Some people like to feel um, out of control or even weak. Some people like to feel violated. That is a core desire. And it's not wrong. If you get turned on by the feeling of being violated, there may be trauma that created that. And there may be confusion about whether it's okay to be turned on by that. But that's what I'm here for, is to help people work through that. And, you know, it's a whole ball of ball of wax because on one hand, people who maybe were sexually assaulted and then later have a core desire of feeling violated or even in danger, um, a lot of people feel like that's, that's wrong. It's giving the perpetrator power. It's... Um, must be damaging, it must be, you know, re-trauma, re-triggering. Um, and so, again, a lot of that is just based in shame. 
And by working through the shame and helping people kind of come to terms with their own personal core desire, um, you can take your power back. And you can own that turn on and that core desire for yourself. It doesn't have to be about your experience or about the perpetrator. You can own your core desire and and uh, take back the power. And it's just a it's a process, you know, and you need help with it maybe. So I help people with that. Help people with um, weird, you know, freaky stuff that may feel you know, wrong or whatever, um, and I help people learn how to, you know, act those things out in a healthy way, um, learn how to embrace core desires that they didn't think were really allowed, but we can find a way. Um, yeah, and also I help people learn how to communicate with their partners what they want. Sometimes it's not that easy and, you know, it takes a little bit of compromising Maybe your partner's core desire is very different than yours, or maybe they don't line up. Sometimes you might have to take turns, you know, but there's ways to do it. It's all just um, bargaining, communication, boundaries. There's a lot that goes into having the kind of relationship that you want and the kind of sex that you want, the kind of sex that's out of this world and mind blowing. There's a lot of different pieces to it. It doesn't just happen naturally every time or you know it's not something you're just supposed to know how to do just from scratch um, it takes it takes a little bit of education learning practicing exploring and that's what a that's what a sex coach can help you with is just exploring all the different avenues of sex and all the different avenues of healing the things that are blocking you from great sex um, yeah, so a sex coach can be just a great tool to add to maybe all the other things you're doing. Um, regular therapy is amazing. I do it as well. Uh, I think it's great to have a combination so that you can have maximum fun and pleasure in your life. So I think that's enough. I've talked a lot. I don't even know who knows where the time went. Um, but Thank you. I am grateful for anyone who watched or watches this in the future. Feel free to share if you want to share this with your friends or you think any of the information in this video is just helpful or educational. Feel free to share and yeah, that's it. If anybody has questions about scheduling a session or, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one work or collaborating on a workshop, just let me know. Thank you.